Hello everybody, today we're going to be repairing a Nintendo 64 game. I bought it on re eBay recently. The seller said it was broken, so I got a pretty decent discount. Uh, I've confirmed it's broken by plugging it into the N64, tried cleaning the contacts, and nothing works. So, that's fine, we're going to repair it. Uh, it just so happens that this game is Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, which is notorious for the Nintendo 64 because it's somewhat rare, came out late, uh, has a mature rating which is rare for the N64 and it's just considered a kind of a cult classic so I'd hate to see this thing go to waste so we're going to open it up try to fix it. Um, I'm going to have a multimeter with leads for checking out um, broken traces and things like that. I'm going to open it up with a uh, security bit you can get these on Amazon, it's three point something or another for these, and then just a regular Phillips head screwdriver. So, we're going to open it up by screw, unscrewing these. Put these off to the side. The reason I like repairing games is inside they're very simple. This is an RF shielding to uh, protect from stray electrons from other places. These are two Phillips heads screwing the RF shielding to the case. So we'll move those. The RF shielding you need to have on this case because right here, these grab on to the uh, cartridge connector. And if you don't have that, they, they'll actually pull up on uh, some of these, I don't know what they're called, pins or something on the cartridge connector and on the N64 and it can damage it. So you do not want to have a game without this RF shielding. So, remove that. We have the circuit board inside with another RF shielding that can stay in. And then a uh, controversial piece. This is a like a dust guard to protect dust from getting inside. But the problem is um, that it can kind of wear away uh, the, the enamel or whatever it is here, the plastic. Um, so I've seen some boards that are very corroded here. Luckily this one is pretty good. I've never actually opened this up. This is the first time. So you can somewhat see, if you look at it in the light, there's a little bit of a wear and tear right there. So not the best design by Nintendo. The NES and Super NES, they were a little better. So we're just going to push this off to the side. And the main things we're going to be looking for are broken traces, you can see the little lines here. Some of these may be broken and it may be hard to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the continuity between the pins here and the pins here. And then another thing we're going to look for is broken solder pads. These can pop off. All it takes is one of these to pop off. Either one trace or a solder pad to pop off and the entire game won't work. So we have to investigate the entire thing. Um, Hopefully there wasn't any sort of static discharge that'll ruin the pins or anything like that. The capacitor probably didn't go bad. Um, that's what we're hoping. So I'm just going to go through it step by step and hopefully we can find the problem. So on the multimeter, we're just going to set it so that if there's any continuity between the leads, it'll make a noise. Hopefully you can hear that's called ringing the wires or checking for continuity. So I'm going to straighten this out. I'm going to go step by step. And if I feel like I'm touching the right place but there's no sound, then I'm pretty sure that will be broken. So we're going to... These three pins are ground here. You can check those, but chances are they'll be good. This pin right here is nothing. So we won't check that. This is ground. That's nothing. There's several other pins that don't do anything. Same on the front. Uh, these pins aren't used. A lot of them are ground. So we'll check those, but they're not as important. All right. So check the first pin. Connects there. That's good. That's good. That's good. Check ground. Actually, that's not ground. I think that's power. 
these all connect. So it may not be the pins here. I've seen broken solder pads, things like that. Some of them you have to follow up. Like I said, I've never checked this one, so we're doing this live. Sometimes you can find the, the problem within seconds. It's fairly obvious. Sometimes it's not so obvious. And it's not even guaranteed that this is going to be fixed. But I've had very good luck fixing Nintendo 64 games and Super Nintendo and NES cartridge games. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm fairly confident that this one will work. I'm going to post the video if it's fixed or not because it's still instructional even if I fail. So the back looked good, at least the pins. Later on we're going to check the traces between these two chips right here. One of them could have gone bad. Uh, so we're going to check the front here. Now I'm not exactly sure where these connect so what you have to do is you have to I'm pretty sure that it connects to one of these yeah this one right here so if you're not sure you just do this break the pins until you hear a beep you kind of narrow it down okay I had to pause for uh, communication so as I was saying you break the pins here that one connects most of these pins here will connect to these pins up here those do nothing I've done this a couple times, so I kind of know. I have an intuitive sense of where they connect. This one. Okay, they all connect. This one I know will connect to this pin. I've done this a couple times. This is the CIC chip to make sure that it's the uh, authentic cartridge. You can't just use any cartridge in the N64. Okay, so it looks like all of these pins are good, which is, eh. <laughs> I don't want to say disappointing because it's good that they're good, but you know, I want to try to find the problem fast. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to check all these connections between these two pins. It could be a trace or it could be a broken solder pad. And the broken solder pad may not manifest itself. Um, sometimes you need to actually reflow the solder and then it'll show. But sometimes you can press on them. If you see the whole blob move, then you know that the solder is broken. So I'm just going to quickly check that. You want to try to hit all the easy parts first and then go to the hard parts I'm not checking for continuity, I'm just checking to see if these are loose so I'm just kind of applying a little pressure Later on, if I really can't find the problem, I'll reflow all of the pads here. Because that will somewhat suspect that pin, but it's probably nothing. I'll reflow it later and see what's up. All right. So, we're just going to connect here to here. And they do not have a connection. I need to make sure that I'm doing this right, but I don't have any continuity there. 
I do have it there. I have it there. 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 Okay, I need to make sure that I'm not being an idiot, but going from here to here. No connection. So that could be from a solder joint or something else, but that may be the problem. There may be only one problem, this connection right here that kills the whole game. So these pins up here go down to these uh, holes here that connect to the other side. So chances are these are good, but it's always good to check. Those connect. Now these holes, what they are, if you don't know much about circuits or circuit boards, but they're holes that go through. They're like uh, metallic cylinders that go through, but the lead will connect to the cylinder, and you flip it around, and you can't tell because it's under underneath the chip. But this, these holes right here, they come up and connect to the other side so you can kind of make lines all over. I'm not an electrical engineer, so I can't use the precise words, but uh, just know that there's big pads under here and if you need to, you can uh, etch away to reveal the pad to solder on top of it. And that's probably not what I'll need to do here to connect there and there, but uh, Sometimes, you know, the trace will be broken from here to here and you'll need to etch away that to solder to here. Or this solder pad could be broken so you need to check that. So, uh, our biggest suspect is here to here. Now, I could be wrong, I need to check it several times before uh, confirming that. Now, that could be the only problem or it could be one of many problems. One time I've had to solder like four wires on front and back to get one game working. Other times it's just a very, very short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause, check all of these, and then I'm going to check and recheck this one. And then if I'm confident, I'm going to just jump a wire from here to here and then see if it works. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I checked all of the leads. I'm pretty sure that they're good, but uh, you know, I may need to check again. And as I said, this pin and this pin did not have continuity. So I took a magnifying glass and this pin, there was a microscopic break between the, the uh, pad and the lead. So that's all it takes to ruin a game. Uh, so I've jumped a wire from here to here, very small wire, unobtrusive. Uh, luckily it's on the edge, you know, I don't have to worry about connecting here to here and accidentally sh touching another pin. So I'm not sure that this is the solution. Um, we're going to try out the game and see. So we're going to move to the Nintendo 64. But first I'm going to... Uh, <laughs> repackage it. So, gotta stick this... Oh, that's not good for the game. Uh, gotta stick this plastic piece on there. Slides in. Put on the RF shielding. I'm not gonna screw it together. You can put it in unscrewed, because I want to, uh, you know, I'll, I might need to unscrew it if it doesn't work. So, just put it back on. If I know how. So, let's go test it. Alright, we got it plugged in. Haven't tested it yet. It's among all of my junk. Some of which is broken, some of which is for testing games. Mostly a lot of crap laying around. Hey, if you don't have crap, or crap laying around, then you're not fixing anything. So, this is the most nerve-wracking part 
of fixing anything. Just testing it out. Here we go. Boom. There you go. It's on. I don't know if it fully works, but this is what it's all about. Seeing it fire up for the first time. Alright. Awesome. That's the conquer we all know and love. Okay, it works. So before I play it, I'm going to go back, clean up the contacts one last time, screw it together, and then have a working Conker's Bad Fur Day, which I bought for a discounted price on eBay. Go out, use this video to repair things. Conquer. Thank you.